in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed and Jesus said, Get thee behind me. Thou shalt worship the Lord, and him alone shalt thou serve. Now write this down, please. The Antichrist system, the Antichrist system is a system of civilization that is in total rebellion to the value system and the government of heaven. The Antichrist system is a value system or a system of civilization that is in total rebellion total rebellion to the government of heaven it is also a system that usurps the will and the dignity the will of men and the dignity of effective living the, the antichrist system will never allow the will of men to find expression no it works by subjugation and it is also a system that never allows for a dignified life you will never truly be under an antichrist system and have long-term dignified living what is the goal what is satan really looking for what motivates his passion to destroy men what motivates his passion to destroy nations what motivates his passion to destroy men of God to destroy business people to destroy politicians to use the tool of religion the tool of economy to use that that all kinds of things what is his passion what is his motivation write this down what Satan wants is total allegiance to him as the source and the sustainer of all things this is what he wants total worship and total allegiance to him as the source and sustainer of all things he fell down from heaven because of an agenda what was the agenda he wanted to run a parallel government satan did not want to dethrone god no he wanted to run a parallel government so that you can choose god or choose him it is still his strategy today every time satan comes and sees you in total allegiance to god he will come as an alternative please pay attention what we call crime what we call moral decadence what we call pain and hardship what we call terrorism what we call corruption are simply inventions that promote one and the same agenda they are different expressions of one and the same agenda to create a system that forcefully brings men all men christians non-christians from any race satan is interested in bringing everyone to a position where you worship him now as we began to advance and modernize as far as our civilization is concerned satan noted that there was something unique about economy now listen i hope you know money and economy is man's idea it's, it's not it's not a heavenly idea at all it's man's idea the idea of money transaction business is man's idea it's an invention a profitable one satan discovered that the greatest thing he can possess from a man to really be able to lord over him is time time 
he found out that every other thing he takes from man does not seem to produce that efficiency but there was one thing that if he can hijack his time that no matter who you are on earth real dominion is dominion over time if you do not have dominion over time you do not have dominion and satan found out that because our civilization please listen carefully our civilization is economically driven he found out that men are willing to give their time if they will get money so that with that money they will now have a means of exchange to solve their problems and meet their needs and satan said beautiful now i have found a strategy what is the strategy let me create a system that manipulates the economy of nations to make it unbearably difficult for men to be able to access the resources that provide for influence are we together that provide for sufficiency because once their needs are met i have found out that they are free and the moment they are free they will give their time to god so in egypt in egypt pharaoh began to oppress the people of god another pharaoh that did not know joseph but then they were giving them straw free of charge and then they would do the building the moment moses came to now propose their exodus the spirit of the antichrist walking through pharaoh got angry and said the remaining time you have is what you are using to serve god stop giving them straw use the remaining time to look for straw what did they tell moses leave that agenda we are willing to stay back don't punish us again so every time god sees a people calling upon the name of the lord father mother and children lifting the hands of jesus in worship and in praise and helping the nations to know him satan will come in economically then the man loses his job daddy let's pray don't talk to me again what is wrong with this man what is suddenly happening to the man he goes to the hospital you measure his bp and you find out that this man is getting sick are you seeing now trouble comes and the children now in an honest effort to help their father they say what can i do and satan says this is what i've been waiting for come to me i will show you what you can do to help your father by the time satan is done with them they will be in the middle of sodom and gomorrah remember lot settled near sodom he didn't enter sodom by the time abraham went to rescue him where did he find him why does a terrorist kidnap and demand ransom what does he want to do with the money what if he dies when someone amasses millions and billions in his account through corruption what does he want to do with it respectfully speaking what happens during election when people come and you find out that people seem to be bought over just with economic empowerment can i tell you this satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church he can allow you to have divine health a thousand times but not resources because he knows that with resources you will have dominion over time and the moment you have dominion over time you will have the time to bow your knees to the god of your salvation you can decide to set aside a day and say father mother and children today we are going to worship the lord when jesus was teaching and helping the people understand the kingdom an embarrassing situation happened there that is instructive the tribute collectors were sent to come and disrupt his program as soon as they got there they said jesus you claim you are teaching people but you've not paid your tax and jesus was in a very embarrassing situation and he said it's all right go and get the fish open the mouth take caesar's coin go and give it to him there is a message there anytime you are focusing on your spiritual growth and your love for god a stranger must visit you the tribute collectors satan knows that you will never have the time to concentrate loving and serving god for as long as your bills are not paid 
so the only way he disrupts your worship is that whilst you are focusing the tribute collector will come it will come as children's school fees it will come as rent issue it will come as health bills so jesus taught us the secret to finding peace make sure you have caesar's coin waiting while you are worshiping so that as soon as he comes you tell him don't distract me pick your coin and go here's how he put it give to caesar what belongs to caesar there are things that belong to caesar and even jesus respected it and then give to god what belongs to god are we together a system that was built by satan to make sure that all but especially believers are so subjugated to a point where they do not see value in serving god and there are all kinds of annexes of that expression in our society today this is the reason why crime corruption moral decadence all of these things continue to to rise geometrically and the government will keep doing their best the judicial system will keep doing their best is that true religious systems keep doing their best africa being a very religious continent and yet we may not seem to be making the kind of headway we should make there is a problem the problem is not the activities the problem is that we need to go back and re-examine carefully that we are immersed in a system it is largely a mind control system is that true it is an information that is godless then fortified by the presence of demon spirits we call it a stronghold a stronghold is a mindset is a belief system that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim in that state are we blessed ideas so when you want to introduce look at jesus i love jesus jesus shows up and here's what he says ladies and gentlemen here is my message repent for the kingdom is at hand within your reach what is repent let's go to your mind i want to help you now but the first thing i need to do is not just to cast out satan salvation is coming but i need to work on you there is something about your understanding that keeps you in servitude there is something about your understanding that keeps you irresponsible a young man is not just irresponsible like that there is a programming that makes irresponsibility marketable there is a mindset a programming that makes cultism marketable there is a mindset that makes corruption marketable so when the kingdom system comes listen carefully the kingdom system does not just produce miracle signs and wonders falling down healings that's wonderful but primarily the kingdom advances on the strength of the message the ideology this is where the real power of the kingdom is it's in the message not just the actions someone i can begin to pray now for the sick or pray for people who are oppressed and these demons will leave them because they honor the word of god that we are speaking but the demons will be waiting at the junction they know that the mind of that victim is still fruitful for their entry all they need to do is manipulate a system again and they are back in comfortably so the real way to transform believers from this demonic software that continues to plague our society please listen number one is the message of the gospel because we are dealing with two kingdoms here is a spiritual issue the issue of salvation is not a religious advocacy it truly is the answer to man's decadence the life of Jesus Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other jesus is the way jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other 
Jesus is Daniel chapter 3 we're now in a time in history where Satan knows that his time is short he knows that we're in the end times he knows that there is a global revival that is coming Satan knows that like never before God has released his power upon the earth but Satan also knows that there is gross ignorance in the church as far as how the kingdom advances we know how souls are saved but we do not know how the kingdom advances within a territory and within a sphere and a few people who try to bring these ideas are greatly persecuted do you know why because for as long as we just feel that once you are born again that's all your whole attention should just be on your spiritual growth that is true but that cannot be the only strategy Daniel chapter 3 let me show you something we're going to pray this is Babylon under the leadership of this king called Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold please look up here we see the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist again he will always bring an image to worship the image can be money the image can be fame the image can be lost the image can be anything the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits you know what this 90 feet and the breadth thereof six cubits and set it up in the plain of dura in the province of babylon we are reading pay attention nebuchadnezzar now watch this this is the whole theme of this scripture is worship the antichrist system worship not money not fame not even persecution worship but look at the structure of that worship before he built that image he made sure that every noble person was on his side look at those who were there nebuchadnezzar the king sent together the princes governors captains are you seeing all those who he won judges treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers over provinces these are the people who came to the dedication of that image what do we call that influence what else is left as far as authority in society is concerned these are the mind control systems he made sure they were all represented in that dedication again princes governors captains judges treasurers there you find it treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers of the provinces come to the dedication of that image which the king has set up so when he sets up an image over a territory he does not disturb everybody yet he begins to scan where is that millionaire businessman come where is that gospel artist that has potentials to go around the world come when he gathers all the influencers he now builds the image watch this verse 3 and the princes governors captains judges treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up they stood before the image uh-huh be patient then there was a cry to you is commanded not suggested commanded O people see how the antichrist system works when it captures the nobles within a territory then decrees begin to come gradually gradually until it looks like it is something that is forceful it is commanded O oh people nations and languages verse 5 that at the time you hear the sound of the cornet the flute the harp the psaltery and all of this you will do what fall down and worship the image smart king he did not say worship me but you just worship my image while i stand back and I enjoy the same thing you see that now satan may not come to you directly and say worship me you'll be too much and you you have enough sense so he'll say do you know what just worship your job just worship your business provided it is not jesus christ worship any other thing you are allowed because any other thing that is not him i have power over it hmm. worship your certificate worship your political position worship your achievement worship your beauty 
worship your intelligence even worship your anointing oh yes worship your church worship your religious activities provided it is not jesus the son i'm satisfied any other thing i can put my image there i can put my image in your business i can put my image in your reputation i can put it anywhere the only thing see everything can be satan's image if it is minus jesus please keep the scripture we'll soon be praying fall down and worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up verse 6 and whoso does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of burning fiery furnace why do you call the issue of finances economic meltdown what made it melt so therefore at that time when all the people had the sound and so on and so forth they fell down and worshipped all all of them when you see the people who inspire you falling down you will be motivated to join them and fall down too when the billionaire businessman who is your boss is worshiping and increasing in the billions while you are going to church and getting broke sooner or later your wife will say i don't understand this thing you are doing and initially you think he will not touch you until your child returns back from his school with the school fees they drive them away you say you know what god have tried for you anything you see me do don't blame me there is an exhaustion satan knows something about man that except you are engraced by god you cannot suffer long indefinitely there will be a breaking point so he will meet you at that point just when you graduated you were on fire from fellowship on campus oh why don't you you know just um join this club or join this group you'll become a believer. ah no in the name of jesus he knows he will allow time he will meet you after five years and say are you still here and you say come what did you even say before let i will agree but just explain let me understand now give us that scripture hmm. verse 8 now wherefore at the time at at that time certain chaldeans came near and accused the jews now we are going to see a contrast of kingdoms verse 9 they speak and said to king nebuchadnezzar oh king live forever that's what the king wants thou hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of all of these instruments and shall fall down and worship you 11 whoso does not fall down and worship he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace verse 12 now he says there are certain jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of babylon shadrach meshach abednego these men O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up then nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring these boys and they brought them before the king this is the price that you pay for being different in a territory that is immersed in a system that is godless nebuchadnezzar spake and said it is true O shadrach meshach and abednego do not ye serve my gods nor worship the golden image which i have set up 15. if you hear all of these things make sure he says listen he says if ye worship not ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace and who is that god that shall deliver you out of my hands it has moved from the issue of worship to the issue of loyalty to god i love shadrach meshach abednego joshua selman answered the king and said unto him watch this O king when it has to do with matters of sociology and matters of governance we give you the respect that is due you but now that you have touched the issue of faith we are not careful to answer you in this matter 17 it says if it be so 
let me tell you that we are a people number one who are motivated by our love for god greater than result are you seeing the contrast of the kingdom life in the kingdom of darkness you are motivated by things ultimately to bow to satan whether you like him or not in this kingdom it is the love of god more than money more than fame more than titles here are people who are not only about to lose their office and their reputation lose their lives and they say if it is on account of that we are more than ready our god whom we serve he is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king 18 he says but if not what sort of a people are these that's the first time the king is hearing that there are people who do not mind we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up 19 then nebuchadnezzar was angry how many people have refused to be promoted because they know that once they are promoted there will be justice there will be equity how many people are you seeing the reason why many people don't do so much and yet they prosper and we sit down there saying they are prospering more than us no oh, do you know who and what they bow to satan was a witness when you were rolling in your living room that lord everything i have is yours then the next thing you just delve into oil and gas and the gods of the sea say you are joking we were there when we saw that worship you will not easily just win a contract like that if there was no adversary there will not be need for dominion please keep that scripture we're about to pray pay attention now he commanded notice are you seeing the first thing he did command the fire to be seven times hotter in their presence they are not yet inside but let them see the potential of the destruction that can come peradventure they will change verse 20 hmm. and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind them what does it mean to bind to limit to limit them and cast them into the burning fiery furnace follow me carefully we're almost done then these men bound in their coats and so on and so forth they were cast into the fire verse 22 therefore because of the king's commandment because the king's commandment was urgent the furnace was exceedingly hot the flame of the fire slew even the men that took up shadrach meshach and abednego imagine such a furnace and this man they fell down into the midst of the fire why satan wanted let me tell you this there is nothing that rewards satan more than punishing a dedicated believer in the presence of other potential deliverers because when they see the pain of one who loves god so much and things go bad it becomes it it amplifies the fear that's why when satan wants to attack believers he does not start with ordinary people he looks for those who have some kind of influence and then he deals with them in a way that discredits god so much this is the strategy next verse verse 24 nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished now these ladies and gentlemen i present to you the power of this kingdom that we represent isn't it amazing that when god is silent it is a message satan continues to do what he's doing but it gets to a time when you stand strong where you stand hopeful and know that this kingdom whether you lift me or not oh god i will not bow ah. lord i will bow to you to no other god but you, Lord. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands have made. But you, Lord. And I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart 
sing, Lord, I will bow. I will bow to you, to no other God but you, Lord. Hear me, believers. I bring you a message. No matter who you are, the strength of your allegiance to this kingdom will be tested in your lifetime. I give you a guarantee by the God of heaven. This one, you will not pray it away. You will only pray for grace to remain and see God show himself strong and mighty. Some of you, as I'm speaking right now, that is the season you are in. It is on account of your strength for God. You would have gotten a job five years ago if only you compromised. But because you are standing, you are now even looking like a fool. Family members are saying, keep being stupid. Then they coin a scripture and say, wisdom is profitable to direct. Is it Christianity we will eat? They will tell you. And you feel stupid for loving him. There are many people who have lost election today who have the credibility but because they made up their minds that they will do it right. Sometimes being right comes with a price. Just because you are right does not always mean you will experience temporal victory. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Let me show you scripture here. If we do not train believers to know that there is a system that attempts to sabotage our allegiance to God, we must get to a point where we restore honor to those who are in pains on account of their dignity for God. Can I tell you this? There are people that have died today simply because they will not renounce Christ. There are people today who may not be experiencing the kind of growth, maybe ministry, because they will not go somewhere and get any other power outside of Jesus Christ. And say, Lord Jesus, if you will not heal, I rather stay and say I do not have the grace, but my hand will not touch any charm or anything to make sure anybody is healed. Can I tell you this? The ways of the kingdom looks deceptfully slow. Everybody will seem to go ahead of you. You are a man of God and God wants to raise you to be a mighty man. And somebody calls you some group and tells you, look, you do ministry this way, you are going to suffer. It doesn't have to be an occultic thing. Just anything that takes you away from Jesus. And it looks marketable. There is a strategy that can increase membership for you. The worst one now is the issue of finance and comfort because the truth is we live in times you know for a long time the church has been shying away from this i'm not talking about some of these carnal things you see around money mm, but i'm talking about if we ignore the place i taught in zaria and maybe i'll wrap up with it there, there are four dimensions to the gospel that if we do not teach believers one spirituality Two, leadership and governance. Three, relationships. Four, economy. If believers are not empowered with these dimensions of spiritual knowledge, they will remain slaves forever in any territory they find themselves in. When you die, you will go to heaven, no? but as far as earth is concerned, you will be a servant, a slave forever. Spirituality men who love jesus sincerely not just as preachers not just as preachers i'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life i'll be here bowing down all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life i'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life five years after marriage no child very soon your family will call you and say look there is a man he's not exactly bad 
there's just something that we are used to it it all of us that's how you even came self and yet in your visions the interesting thing is that while satan is doing all this nonsense you will go back to bed and see that god will not change what he has been saying your womb will carry a prophet be careful be careful be careful and all kinds of suggestions are coming from everywhere satan is building that image my brothers and my sisters let me tell you this many times you feel stupid when you look around and it looks like you are not moving forward sometimes respectfully speaking loved ones and people who are sincere can look at you and say look at this you graduated 20 years ago till now you have not even built a house the only thing growing in your life is your age look at your classmate he's even in dubai he's everywhere there and sometimes you say lord is this your plan for me when jesus was on that cross you would have called him defeated but something was happening that you did not see he hung between the nails and while he was hanging caesar herod and co were saying finally and satan was rejoicing since you will not bow i will hang you on a tree either ways you will have to listen to me and he closed his eyes in death hell was rejoicing we killed the son of god suddenly a stranger steps into hades the place of the dead what are you doing here and he says when sinners die where do they go i became sin now i'm here and the cohorts of hell were all on him how else would he tell us that he is victorious until we we have to see it in a context and that was the context satan and the cohorts of hell paul was shown this in a revelation fighting to force him now to bow down and when the legal claims of justice were made the bible says he made a public show of them watch this triumphing over them in judgment he now meets face to face with the one he created and say lucifer your rebellion give me the keys this is the kingdom we are part of revelation chapter one i was he that was dead and now is alive and i have the keys that's where he got it from watch this when he held that key he went to hades apostle peter taught us he preached to the saints right who had been waiting for this miracle of salvation they died in faith believing and when they believed he opened those prisons and he said let's go the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose when he came out he came out together with all those people watch this now the last enemy to be destroyed is death and he destroyed death and with power and glory the disciples were shaking you wasted our time we were part of this system now you brought a new kingdom we've lost everything we look like failures but when he resurrected he said all hail he entered the room without opening the door he's showing you the potentials of this kingdom that means look i used to think doors have to open for you to enter but i learned that there is still a way the door can still be closed and you will enter all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me i know you look like failures for walking with me for three and a half years but you are about to see the power in this kingdom go with this authority Go and disciple nations. Teach them everything I've taught you. Teach them that somewhere in their life, they may see a similitude of defeat, but they should wait. Teach them everything I taught you. 
and while you teach them i am with you i will confirm your words with signs confirm your words with miracles hear me every time evil seems to prevail over good something is happening that is true for this nation that is true for africa can i tell you this our beloved country and our beloved continent there's an army rising up there's an army I'm telling you by prophecy and from scripture it will not end the way you are seeing it like this no see Jesus is not coming back as king of a weak beaten defeated church the kingdom that we serve for a long time it looks like it's a shame to be a child of God but I tell you we're about to enter an era of the apostolic move of God upon the earth economically politically this nation will experience something that it has never seen from independence i tell you this by the spirit of god listen where death ends is also where resurrection starts for now it does not yet appear what god is doing in your life sometimes as we preach the gospel as servants of the living god people even look at us as a nuisance to civilization what are you teaching calm down you may not see it yet but something is happening from the spirit of god through our spirit to your spirit man and your mind when satan wanted to propagate this demonic software of babylon it is a spirit then belief systems then destruction now that god is bringing deliverance it comes from the spirit through a new belief system it takes a while you may not look like it oh politician but god saved you from winning that election because there is one you are going to let me show you something we have read the end of the book we know what will happen hmm revelations 18 i know you look cheated i know you look defeated brothers and sisters look at me let me show you how babylon will end the bible already told us the end after these things i saw another angel come from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory what an angel next verse and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is fallen is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit now follow carefully i want to show you something and then we'll pray for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication so babylon is a goddess she sits upon a horse until you fraternize with her you will not reign in this kingdom she has called politicians she has called men of god she has called business people you want to rise it is not the way it's not just about this school thing <clears throat> come let us get into a partnership there are many people today that you continue to admire let me tell you the truth their excelling is based on their fraternity with Babylon. Let me show you the end of the story. It says, The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants, businessmen, there it is. The merchants of the earth are wax rich. How? Through the abundance of her delicacy. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, 
come out of her this is the word for you now you are almost getting there but come out of her my people why that ye be not partakers of her sins that ye that ye receive not of her plagues there is a plague that is coming on the earth for her sins have reached unto heaven and god had remembered her iniquity be patient watch this it says reward her even as she rewarded you and double her according to this and that and that next verse it says how much she has glorified herself the pride of this antichrist system called babylon and live deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she said in her heart i sit a queen and i am no widow and i shall see no sorrow this is babylon talking therefore shall her plagues come in how long death mourning famine she shall be utterly burnt with fire for strong is the lord who judged her watch this and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon that mighty city in one hour is your judgment come now watch this let me show you it says the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn for her and no man buyeth her merchandise anymore there are people buying it now they are buying let me show you what she sells do you want to see what she sells babylon let's see what babylon sells number one the merchandise of gold the merchandise of silver precious stones pearls fine linen purple silk scarlet cayenne wood all manner of vessels of ivory all manner of precious wood of brass of iron of marble pay attention to 13 cinnamon odors she sells anointing she sells frankincense she sells wine she sells all kinds of graces she sells abundance she sells wheat let's start reading now she sells beasts she sells sheep. she sells horses she even sells chariots let's what else does she sell slaves and what all they are her products she can give you influence the souls of men as an artist you can get into fraternity with her and sing anything and the world must listen to you because she has sold you the souls of men where did she get those souls the ones who came to do business with her what shall it profit a man if he gains so as she's giving you there's something she collects and sells it to whoever wants now here's what the bible says i it says that you prosper is that true and be in health but make sure your soul does not become the commodity that goes in exchange I can tell you there are people who have sold their souls to the devil not by saying satan take no the more you leave god as you rise there is an exchange that is happening the more your fame increases and your fire goes down business people hear me respectfully speaking because it, this money thing sometimes brings a lot of arrogance one people have money i'm a billionaire i'm a millionaire whether in naira or dollars or whatever currency usually that state deafens people and they don't listen to anything again i am rich the mistake of i think the laudation church they said i am rich i have no need for anything anything that would take your place in my life may it never come any door that would take your place in my life may it never open why have i taught you this today number one to help you see the motivation behind the evil in our society it is not a sociological issue it is not just an educational issue in truth from a sociological standpoint when we start addressing the ills in society we look at indices like education quality of living governance and the rest and we are right
that is the reason why our law courts will continually prosecute criminals because there is a software they go to prison they come out they return back they come out they return back they come out they return back because their bodies are merciless executors of a mindset that only the gospel can erode the gospel in its entirety the message and the value system respectfully speaking and not not to create any sense with with every sense of honor and respect it is also the reason why families do not last it is statistic tells us i hope i'm right that one out of every two marriages may not last long and will end it doesn't mean the people are wrong it is that somebody somewhere or both of them have exposed themselves to a programming that is not consistent with the kingdom is there a way to prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity yes what is the solution it is called the gospel now you know that the gospel is not only a message that saves you have received the message that saves now receive the ideology that transforms the ideology that transforms you the ideology that transforms your society you can take that ideology like a software program it to your children if you never see them again you can trust what they will become the software is that powerful this is why we have to pray that god will raise people who are connected to kingdom first then we now spread them across the seven strata of human activities a politician that is not just a christian fanatic but one who understands the kingdom will be in a better position to legislate because number one he knows that god is the god of all flesh he's not in that office to represent christians he's in that office to represent god's creation so his ideas even though reference from scripture will be communicated in a way and a manner that makes all and sundry to advance in their lives fanatism is not an honor to any religion concerned it is still a deception by Satan because it punishes all involved. Fanatism and religion does not profit one party or the other. It looks like it profits one party. But when the full scope of the deception is unleashed, everyone involved suffers. Can I tell you this? When God sent me to this city, one of the graces and one of the instructions and one of the things that he gave is that by the grace of God, God wants to raise a people who are kingdom people, but people of influence. He will station them in strategic positions, but they will not just be people who are going around to earn a living. They are people who know that they are there on assignment. This is why he gave us the grace. I'm not a politician. I don't do politics. I don't do partisan politics. I'm a man of God. But let me submit to you. God has given us the authority that enthrones kings and removes them. It is true. What is our assignment tonight? Understand. Go back home now and see your child who is always stealing. It is not the stealing. You can flog that child till tomorrow. Go back as a priest, not just a father. Call that child. And say in addition to what you are going to receive the spirit that is behind you in the name of Jesus Christ are you seeing that now go back as a politician and enter your office stretch your hands over the National Assembly and say in the name of Jesus I stand not just as a an honorable member or a senator I stand with priesthood and I speak let the kingdom come within this fair as a business person don't just resume work tomorrow no everyone who is coming is is in one of two kingdoms you are not just there to buy and sell listen we must develop a new value system let me encourage all of you who own schools here i know there are a number of people here that own schools within this city and across this nation I beseech you by the mercy of God without any sense of fanatism introduce programs that correct destructive beliefs there are programs it doesn't matter whether people write it in the exam or not let there be programs that help people 
honesty morality and conscience spiritual growth leadership financial intelligence introduce this so that the children from infancy will begin to learn ethics of responsibility and they grow to become people who will change society and i pray that in the name of jesus god will empower people here i know that god has helped people but god will empower people that will set up quality leadership institutes that the day will come is out of those institutes who enthrone kings within territories merely saying one day you know a society will change is just a joke there must be programs and there must be intelligence applied to it Have I wasted your time tonight? The seven mountains. Religion. God is helping us. We who are the servants of God. The mountain of family. This is one area that God has raised marvelous vessels. Like Pastor Kingsley. Oh yes. Oh yes. You cannot tell how many homes and how many lives have been put back in order. Because he honored that grace. What of politics? There are several politicians here. God is counting on you. Not just to be a fanatic, but to be a nation builder. To come up with perspectives that are referenced from scripture. That your presence there will ward off darkness. You can be an apostle in politics. Then media. Arts and entertainment. We've discussed it here. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? When we talk about the revival that is coming, we're not necessarily just talking about crusades alone. The context of the move of God coming will not just be spiritual in that area alone. Civilization has evolved. God will have to bring people with intelligence. We're already there at the crusade grounds. Everybody will not be there. We will keep casting the devils and healing the sick. But in addition, we'll keep helping people who will rise everybody here is connected to a family somehow go back and begin to change that software be intentional you are a father don't sit down and allow your children to learn anything and grow and just give them money and cars that's not an inheritance you're a politician make up your mind don't just leave and exhaust your tenure start mentoring others not just godfatherism mentorship teach them the ethics of governance you are a businessman don't just as we call it in nigeria the slang chop alone and don't just give people money that's not the only thing they need most people don't need money most people need a transformed mind create a platform of four or five people and help them the value of influence is that you are able to lift others with that platform god gives you I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. He leaves you with an assurance that the night cometh when no man will be able to walk again. But I tell you this, God has brought us to such a time as this. We must stand up and fight Babylon. We do not just fight with bows and spheres alone. Number one, we fight by introducing the gospel to the system. First as a message, the more people are saved, the more God can find many men that he can use to promote his agenda. Number two, we must bring the ideology of the kingdom. We must translate the ideology of the kingdom into programs, including sociological programs that the world can receive. Many of them will not receive it from a standpoint of fanatism. It must not be a Christian's program. It must come a value system reference from scripture that is intentional about changing people. Three things you should never fight as I round up. Number one, do not fight the value of spiritual connection. You will lose in today's world. The strength of every man is in his spiritual connection. Number two, do not fight any opportunity to learn leadership. Leadership has nothing to do with titles. You must know how influence is produced. It is the key to making men buy into your ideologies. Number three, do not fight relationships. Be fruitful means re be relational. Everything multiplies because of relationship. It is based on your relationship with the Holy Spirit that you grow. Number four, 
do not fight economy please do not fight economy do not fight economy don't go around saying all these people preaching prosperity be careful i know there are imbalances but don't join the devil in in misleading believers a territory that is not economically empowered will be the territory that serves there is a dimension of the gospel that requires economic empowerment and i know that god is going to raise people i'm unashamed about it your heart must not be there your heart will be with jesus and then he will give you resources that are equivalent to the resources of a nation and you will do wonders as for me i made a vow and a covenant with god that as a spiritual leader i will not just lead a people who are passionate towards god signs and wonders miracles that's wonderful but in addition to that i believe in influence and then inculcating value systems that can transform society abuja and this nation and this continent is too small if god can find people enough who are connected spiritually understand leadership people who understand this kingdom networking and then people who are economically empowered this will be satan's nightmare this will also be the nightmare of the antichrist system are you ready to pray father let your kingdom come lift your voice and pray let your kingdom come let your kingdom come let your kingdom come in the name of jesus christ now we understand the motivation behind the ills in our lives ills in our society ills in family that more than just the things that happen more than crime and decadence and cultism and corruption there is a spiritual problem that must be addressed the spiritual problem number one is rejecting jesus and rejecting his value system and that has come because of a programming a mindset fortified by demon spirits called the antichrist system is a babylonian strategy Babylon, babylonian here means it is a spiritual context lift your voice and pray we are that generation that will not bow in the name of jesus yet we will rise we will excel and represent the purposes of the kingdom because of our presence in this city advancement of all sorts will find expression because of our presence in this nation in governance in politics go ahead and pray we decree and declare in the name of jesus the christ of god it may take time but we submit to the training it may take time but we submit ourselves to the dealing this apostolic and prophetic order of kingdom advance Are you praying? Hallelujah. Now, please listen. It is because of the existence of this system that he gave us power over and power against. It will take more than just advice. It will take more than words to subdue this demonic influence that has followed families and has followed individuals the last prayer and we're done father the level of grace i need for this season grant it unto me the level of grace that is required that in and through my life the powers of darkness are dislodged from the life of my children from the life of my husband from the life of my wife my business in the name of jesus i obtain that and grace go ahead and pray it takes power this is a kingdom of power demonic forces are real oppressions of darkness are real you don't just need power to solve spiritual problems you need power to solve political problems you need power to solve economic problems you need power to solve family problems you need power to solve sociological problems to solve employment unemployment problems Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallelujah. Please don't miss next week. I'm going to be sharing something very, 
I, after the miracle service, I'll be sharing something powerful. The next series that we're getting into, we're going to be dealing with the kingdom. And God is going to be showing us a lot of things. You will see the predictability of territorial transformation. That it is not very difficult to transform a territory. It looks hard only because of the complication of the men that are, the men that are there. As many as there are students in different universities, you can predict the graduation of the students. You can predict that medicine, whether it's in um, 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 ABU or Unilag or, or whatever university, because there is a common program. Someone in Lagos does not have to come down to University of Abuja to be a graduate of medicine. Once he has the program there, right from where he is, he can change. It's not whether people are living in Abuja or Lagos, wherever. Once we can find the content methodically arranged that transform people, everybody, it doesn't matter what church you now go to. I'm praying that you will get to that time where you don't have to go to specific churches to know you are secured. That at, at least a, any major church you can sit down and know like a university that I'm still safe there. That two people from different churches can talk kingdom and know that it was the same curriculum that was used to build us. God's idea is not to have everybody follow one man of God. No. Mm -mm. He will not get the job done. He may show that the individual is successful, but the job will not be done. God's idea is to see that his value system is represented everywhere so that believers don't have to go too far to find him everywhere from family you find it there business you find it everywhere you can find his value system i pray for you in the name of jesus that these truths you have learned let it speak over your life this week in the name of jesus christ please keep standing everyone we have just a minute. We will always do this for as long as we live. Let's minimize movement. Very quickly, in one or two minutes, there are people here. You've heard me talk about two kingdoms. The kingdom of Satan, darkness, and the kingdom of God's dear son. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, whilst listening to you, the Holy Ghost began to speak to me. That it's important I make this commitment for Jesus. Or you are here and you are saying, I've given my life to Jesus, but I need a genuine renewal. This is home for you. If you belong to any of these categories and you following online also, all the overflows down to the basement, outside, doesn't matter where. I'm going to ask those who are inside here and around the balcony, just make your way. We're going to start clapping for them. Please, you want to make Jesus Lord of your life. Don't sit down and wait for anybody. He brought you here. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they come. Let's celebrate them as they come. Run to Jesus. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Allow them come to Jesus. This can be the beginning of a new and a genuine journey. A journey to transformation. A journey to kingdom relevance. Celebrate them. They are still coming. Celebrate them. They are still coming. God bless you. God bless you. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I think I love Jesus, but I'm not sure. Join them. Join them very quickly if you are not sure. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Join them very quickly. Are they still coming? We have just a minute or two left very quickly. God bless you. 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 Now, listen. It matters that souls are saved through our lives. Soul winning is not a church thing. You can win souls anywhere at all. Are we together? Thank you so much for all of you who are in front here. Those following from any nation, uh, watching from every whatever television station you are connecting to, and then by way of internet, please join in this prayer if you want to make Jesus Lord of your life. All those in the overflows outside, just stand in faith as we pray this prayer. Please lift your hands to Jesus if you can. Those in front, say this after me. Let it be very loud and very clear. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. 
I make Jesus my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I also receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we present to you these ones that you died for. It's an honor to lead them to Jesus. Someone help this woman. She didn't pray that prayer. Anybody help her? And you can just help her. Just speak to her. Just lead her in the prayer. Our time is gone. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these precious people. And we declare in the name of Jesus that the grace to live victorious Christian lives, may that grace be released upon you now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything that is not of God, let it live your life now. I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word. And I declare from today by the power that has raised Christ from the dead, the grace to go forward ever and backward never. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to God's family. Welcome to Koinonia in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please, I'd like you to follow the counselors. They are waving the placard. Let's celebrate them as they go. All of you in concert, please this way. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. 